Despite advances in drugs to treat cancer, for several common tumours, surgery is still the main hope for cure. But when it comes to the liver, in years gone by, cancers there were considered a death sentence. Not any longer. As you're about to hear, these days some surgeons go to extraordinary lengths to cut out liver malignancies. Alan Hemming is Professor and Chief of Transplantation and Hepatobiliary Surgery at the University of California, San Diego. There's different sorts of liver cancer. One is primary liver cancer, which is hepatocellular carcinoma, arises usually in diseased livers. There's also cholangiocarcinoma, which is a bile duct type of cancer that arises in the liver. The hepatocellular carcinoma arises usually in cirrhotic livers, and that makes dealing with it difficult in terms of resection because we have to leave some liver behind that works, and the worse off the liver is to start with, the less margin for error we have. If you actually go back a few years, you're not talking about primary liver cancer, even primary liver cancer, but secondary liver cancer as well, which commonly from, say, the colon, doctors would say, it's inoperable, go home, put your affairs in order. And that's transformed over the last few years. Sure. Actually, if you go back in North America anyway, there was a survey done in about 74, 75. And at that point, the mortality from liver surgery was running in about the 15% range. And if you looked at the cirrhotic patients, it was 50%. And I can guarantee you that if that's what we had now, I wouldn't be interested in doing this. Currently, we have operative mortalities for standard liver resections of around 1 or 2%. And for some of the very extensive higher-end procedures that weren't even available back then, we would quote mortality rates of 5 to 10%. Most people listening to this would think if you've got liver spread, the story's over. This is just They're death. spread everywhere. Liver surgery for primary liver cancer obviously makes sense in that if you can do it, it started in the liver, it may only be in the liver. So you take it out and if it's nowhere else, you've cured the patient. For other forms of cancer that metastasizes to the liver, then the supposition would be, well, if it's in the liver, it's everywhere else. But that's not necessarily true. That's not necessarily true. Particularly we, when we started doing this for colon cancer, the liver is, you can think of it as a filter for the blood that comes out of the GI tract. And you can imagine that if there was a cell from colon cancer that was in the blood coming out of the gut, then it might get filtered by the liver, grow there, but never be anywhere else, not make it past that filter. If that's true, and we resect the primary colon cancer in the bowel site, and then go ahead and resect the liver, that we would have a chance for cure. And what are the results before we get to the more extensive surgery? For something like colon cancer, things have actually improved. Even five to ten years ago, we would have said cure rates for resection from colon cancer metastatic to liver were about 35%. With the addition of newer adjuvant chemotherapy, it's probably in the neighborhood of 50%. And other people talk about, well, if you've got one or two liver secondaries or one or two sites for your primary liver cancer, then you can operate. But if it's four or five or six, well, we just can't do it. Again, those were things that arose early in liver surgery when we're always weighing risks versus benefits. As you go up in number with tumors in the liver, then the chance for cure starts to go down. If your operative mortality is high, then the relative risk-benefit ratio is not there. So as our operative mortality has gotten less and less and has become a safer operation, our willingness to do more extensive tumors has gone up. Addition of adjuvant chemotherapy has affected those patients who have five or six or even ten tumors in their liver. Basically now we'll resect anything that we can as long as we can leave enough liver behind to successfully get the patient through and that clear the liver of all disease. And that's worth doing? Well, that's a matter of some controversy, I would guess. But some people would say it's heroic, yeah, which so is almost the worst thing you can say to people. Right. I mean, it depends on how much people are willing to go through to get a chance for cure. And if I were to offer a patient a 10% chance for cure, but a 2% chance of mortality, is that an acceptable risk for them? And it may be a very acceptable risk for them, but then when we get into is it an acceptable risk for the healthcare system and how much money it costs, et cetera, that uh, becomes a cultural decision much more so than just an individual patient decision. Now, you've developed a rather dramatic way of doing this surgery. Well, I'm not sure I developed it, but I do it. I think you're referring to ex vivo liver resections, where we can combine some of the techniques of liver transplantation with that of oncologic surgery, where we would take the liver right out of the body, cool it down with preservation solution, resect it on the back table where there's no blood flow, which allows us to do complex vascular reconstructions, reconstruct all the blood vessels, and then auto-transplant it back in. And the person could live without the liver for the length of time it takes to do that sort of operation? Correct. I mean, it's very similar in some ways to doing a liver transplant in that we can have a, a no liver in somebody for up to four or five hours, in fact, even longer if we need to. And how bad does the spread need to be to have to take the liver out? 
It's not so much the spread. It's usually more the location of the tumor in relation to the blood vessels in the liver. The liver basically has blood vessels that are inflow vessels, and then there are outflow vessels, and there's only a certain number of them. So if the tumor involves all three of the outflow vessels, then it's either unresectable or you have to figure out a way to reconstruct those outflow vessels. It's hard to reconstruct those outflow vessels with blood flowing in them, so you have to stop the blood flow. While you can do that in the warm, in the patient, there's a limited amount of time that you have then in the warm before the liver is damaged. So it's, there are some cases where it's better to take it out and cool the liver down. And what if you can't fix it when the liver's out? I don't like to think about that. So most of the time you can actually do it? Before the liver comes out, we assess what it is we need to do. And if we can't reconstruct things, then we don't go ahead. But these days we can reconstruct fairly small blood vessels with some sort of conduit. So we've never run into a case where we've taken the liver out and haven't been able to put it back in. Yeah, it doesn't bear thinking about, does it? Alan Hemming is Professor and Chief of Transplantation and Hepatobiliary Surgery at the University of California, San Diego.